Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, everybody. I know it's been a long day, and thank you to Market Fest for organizing this great day for you. So my name is Jody Samuels, and my colleague Juan Maldonado, and I want to welcome you to Elliott Wave Made Simple with Fibonacci and Harmonics. Juan, by the way, is the Chief Elliott Wave Strategist for FX Traders Edge. So we are going to be diving in into how to profit from the waves and whether you are a newbie or experienced trader you will get lots out of this class and that's my promise to you I always like to start with the disclaimer so please read this to yourselves now I want you to get the best viewing experience possible so please turn off everything operating in the background including email systems Skype iTunes or any other programs. Please silence your phone, close your door, and give yourself this time, this hour, and 15 minutes to discover something new that you might just add to your trading arsenal, your toolbox. And I want you to stay until the very end, that's 4.30, because we have a very extra special promo for you to conclude your Elliott Wave Made Simple webinar experience. I'd like to start by introducing FX Traders Edge. It's a premier global online trading school and the home of the Forex Foundation, the Elite Wave Series, and the Wavy Tunnel Pro. And we offer individual and institutional clients proprietary tools, services, and education to trade Forex, CFDs, and stocks online. And our goal is to give the trader the tools to navigate the global markets with confidence. And that's my hope for you today, that you learn some tools to navigate the global markets just a little bit better so that you have more conf confidence in your trades. I also just want to share my latest accomplishment with you, which is writing this book and having it published by Wiley. And some traders have told me that it is one of the a great trading education book that they've that they've read so if you're one of those traders thinking about transforming yourself into a self-sufficient entrepreneurial trader if that's one of your goals then please check out my book on these websites so it's called the traders pendulum the 10 habits of highly successful traders thank you for that little advertisement all right so tell me are you currently using Elite Wave analysis in your trading? So just think about it, are you? So I just want to assure you that you are in the right place. If you currently use Elliot and you want to delve in deeper so you really understand how to count the waves, in other words, you love analyzing markets, and you're also in the right place if you've learned a little bit of Elliot or are totally new to it and you want to profit from it, without becoming a consummate wave counter like Juan is. So tell me, we're going to start now. Do you want to learn how to navigate the markets with Elliott, Fibonacci, and Harmonics? I always like to start with the three pillars of trading success, and then I'm going to go into the 10 lenses checklist. This is an exercise that we're going to go through together, showing you my favorite, very favorite, Elliott Wave setup that I use over and over and over again, and you can use it too. And then I'm going to turn it over to Juan, who is going to do analysis on live markets, which he does every single day for FX Trader's Edge. And at the end, we're going to offer you a promo, which you don't want to miss. So let's start with the three pillars of trading success. We believe that there are three pillars. The first is the analysis, the second is the strategy, and the third is the coaching and accountability. So using one without all three is like climbing up a mountain without climbing gear. It's not enough. It's not enough to have the strategy. It's not enough to have just the analysis. And you just you need all three. Number three is really important, coaching and accountability, which we'll talk about momentarily. But let's start with the analysis, Elite Wave, Fibonacci, and Harmonics. 
This is one of the key pillars to achieving consistency and to have a thorough knowledge of the market to determine possible future scenarios and be prepared to take advantage of opportunities that arise. So, for example, on a big news day like today, we can't go into to FOMC not knowing what the to what the possible scenarios would be and what the potential targets are if we go through certain levels. So that's our context and we use Elliott Wave and Fibonacci in order to have market context and we've recently added harmonics. So first we do the analysis and I'm going to share some of that with you now. Ralph Nelson Elliott studied various market indices over a 75-year period in the 1930s when he was actually bedridden, and he discovered that stock markets traded in repetitive cycles, and that these cycles or waves reflected the emotions of investors. And these waves or cycles we can describe today because of his work, and let's have a look at the next slide at Fibonacci. Did you know that Fibonacci is very much a part of Elliott? In fact, Fibonacci is a part of Elliott wave analysis. It's also a part of harmonics. So both different analysis techniques, Elliott and harmonics, use different Fibonacci ratios in the analysis. So when we combine Elliott with harmonics and we get the Fibonacci levels working at the same time, when they coincide, converge, that's what we call the convergence of Elliott, Fibonacci, and harmonics, and that's when we have our high probability target levels, our high probability entry levels, and that's what we look for. There's nothing better than to have a couple of different analysis techniques lining up with, with each other before we start with the strategy, before we trigger that trade. This is the very familiar sequence of numbers where we add one number to the next and total it and we get the subsequent number. So 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. All of the ratios are derived from this sequence of numbers. So we can divide one number into the next or one number, skip one, divide it into the third or the fourth, and we will get all of the retracement ratios and the extension ratios that we're all so very familiar with. The retracement ra ratio is the most common, 38.2, 50%, 61.8. 61.8 is taken by dividing 89 by 144, for example. The inverse of that, which is an extension, and that's how we determine our targets, is 1.618, and that's 144 divided by 89. So Fibonacci is one of my favorite people <laughs> and favorite methodologies for analyzing the market moves, and it is part of Elliott Wave Analysis. The Fibonacci sequence is found in this eight white wave cycle as well. So this is the eight wave Elliott wave cycle. Wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, A, B, C. And when we see this map of the markets, then it, the, the price movement becomes clear to us. At least it becomes clear to me as an Elliott wave trader. So I like to see the eight wave cycle because then I feel comforted by the market and I get confidence in my trades. This could be a daily time frame and it can also be a five minute time frame. So you don't have to be necessarily be a position taker trading off of the daily and weekly charts. You will see these patterns on every single time frame no matter whether you're a day trader, a momentum trader, a swing trader, or a position taker. You can also see some of the patterns in this eight wave cycle and you might recognize the head and shoulders pattern. Okay, the head and shoulders pattern that shows up at, the, at market tops and at the very end of every single trend move. 
Okay, I don't know if you're seeing that. You will see different chart patterns that show up as Elliott wave patterns, and the head and shoulders pattern is just one of them. So this is the eight wave cycle, and I show you this. This is from the Elliott wave principle by Frost and Prechter. I show you this because it shows you how, by moving down the time frames, you can actually see the same patterns repeating themselves over and over again, and that's called the fractal nature of the markets. So there are fractals in nature, and this is a fractal image, and we have fractal markets. So you can see the branches of the tree. The smaller branch is really a replica of the whole tree. And if we look to the right at this fractal image, we see the, this image just unfolding and uncoiling here. And, and th this is based on Fibonacci. So we have a lot of repetition in the markets as well. Now, the strategy, the strategy that we use is called the wavy tunnel, but it, this is true for any strategy, and that's the second pillar. It's to have a highly effective strategy, which is easy to understand when making a trading decision. After a good analysis, strategy is used to identify the exact entry point, the stop loss level, and profit target to know when to trade and when to stay out of the market. Removing the emotions is key. That's why we have a strategy and that's why we define the entry point, the stop loss level, and the profit target. And we also, by looking at the market cycles, we will know when to trade and when to stay out of the market. Some of us feel very comfortable, for example, trading the trends, and others feel very comfortable finding the end of the trend. And I'm going to show you some examples of that shortly. So this is an example of three different time frames overlaid. So the red might be a daily, and then the four-hour chart might be the blue lines, and we see the five-wave sequence. The green might be an hourly chart. You see the market cycles unfolding in any time frame, but on this daily chart, you only see one, one uptrend. In order to get inside this trend, you might have to go down to a smaller time frame. So if you keep the daily trend in mind, if you keep the daily trend in mind and you move down to a four hour or a one hour chart, for example, and let's say you're following the blue four hour, you're going to be buying right here where, we, where we're saying buy. Okay? Buy on every retracement. And whether the, these are moving averages to keep you retracing back to the averages, because you know moving averages are really a great way to keep us in the trend, I've got to say. When price extends like this, and we're out here in space, price has to come back to the averages, come back to equilibrium. And we see that either with a sideways correction or a more of a steep correction. And corrections happen in three waves, three waves at a time. So in order for price to come back to the moving averages, you want to see, you want to, you, you want to be patient with time. And you want to see either a sideways price action or a steep correction. And then once the correction is over, you can be buying again in the larger trend. So every time price comes back, you want to be buying. Every time. This is already the smaller time frame that I'm looking at, the hourly. Okay, Every time you want to be buying, buying. So you have to think and change. It's a mindset thing. You have to think buy on pullback, buy on dips, buy on weakness. And it's counterintuitive, really. right? You've all been told you have to buy on strength buy on strength, buy on strength. Well, 
yes, you have to buy when the market is strong, when the trend is strong, but honestly, when I worked at JP Morgan, I used to tell my traders back then, buy on weakness. Buy on weakness, buy on pullbacks, buy on corrections. So nothing has changed in a very long time. I started trading a very long time ago. And I did. I used to, <laughs> everything that I tell you, I used to speak about with my traders on the desk. So buy on pullback. Yes, we need to be in a strong trend. And how do we know that it's a strong trend? The steeper the move, the stronger the trend. It's as simple as that. If the trend is something like this, it's kind of wobbly. It might give you more comfort, okay, because it's, it's a slow-moving trend, and maybe it's not as jarring or as agitating as this will be. This is a very quick trend, and you really have to get in very fast or else you're going to miss it. There's no having major pullbacks on a trend like this, but on here you have the comfort of taking your time and buying, you know, buying pullbacks, but it is a weak trend. So with the weak trend, you're going to get this kind of a price action also, and you have to be wary about it. It almost looks like it's a sideways movement, but with, with, but with this trend, you're going to get very shallow pullbacks like that. So how do you know when the trend is over? Well, we don't, but we have some indicators which help us with that, some indications. And we can start with just what's the definition of a trend, higher highs and higher lows. So in this diagram, we see higher highs and higher lows. And then now look at this. As soon as the market turns over, we have lower highs and lower lows. The other thing that you can do is to draw a channel connecting the trend. Draw a channel connecting the trend and when you see a trend line break, that's your first clue that the market might be shifting and might be turning around. All right, I'm talking an awful lot about this. Let's, let's move on and we will talk about this in the context of the eight wave cycle now. So this is an Elliott Wave 8-Wave cycle. I've introduced it to you. On the next slide, we're going to talk about how, what, what types of trades we should look to get into uh, during the, the market moves. So the three rules that cannot be broken for Elliott, one is that Wave 2 doesn't go, go below 0 0.0. Well, we're, we're down here for that. Wave 2 doesn't go below 0 0.0. That's down here. And what that means is if we're buying or buying on the pullback, we know where our stop loss is. It's below the low point on the visible chart. That's where it is. The next point is that wave four doesn't go below the end of wave one. So wave four is up here, and the, the end of wave one is down here. If we have something like this, a three-wave move and then wave four coming all the way back down again here, well, guess what? Wave four is too long and it's likely that we're going to have something like this. Three waves up and three waves down. It's very easy as an Elliott wave trader to think that, okay, we're going to do a wave four and then we're going to do a wave five. That's why we have to be aware of an extended move down, especially when it takes out the top of the wave one, because this is a trend, a five wave move is a trend, but when we have a three wave move, the next trend is going to be a three wave move. It's going to be a three wave move, trend, correction, trend. The third rule is that wave three isn't the shortest wave. So wave three, this, this wave can't be the shortest wave. Wave three is usually the steepest wave, and that's where you, you want to get in on, on small pullbacks, small pullbacks, small pullbacks. Wave four is a pretty extended pullback, and just note how far wave four goes. Again, draw your trend lines, draw your channel, so that you have the, the entire five-wave sequence within those channel lines. Just a note on the corrective side, 
this is called a zigzag, A, B, C, and I'll give you a clue. When we do my favorite Elliott Wave pattern, when we do the exercise, it is a three-wave sequence. So it's either A, B, C, or one, two, three. That is my absolute favorite trade, A, B, C, or one, two, three, the beginning of a move or the end of the move. Okay, but we're going to go into that in detail. So what kind of strategies do we use for this eight-wave cycle? Well, we use end-of-trend strategies at market tops and bottoms. So right here and right here. We use sideways strategies for waves 2, 4, and B. Those are the sideways markets. When I say sideways strategies, really all I mean is make note of the sideways price action and look look to get into the trend okay look to get into the next wave so for the wave 2 you want to get into the wave 3 during the wave 4 you want to get into the wave 5 you can also trade the corrective move that's fine but when you trade the correction a wave two or a wave four correction, as many traders do, you've got to keep the big picture in mind, the context, and know when to get out. You want to get out at the bottom end of the channel. You can't stay short forever, right? You've got to get out at support. And then the wave B is also, this is the, the turnaround. A makes a move down, Wave B moves higher. We don't take out the start of wave A. We don't make a new high. And then the market continues down. The characteristics of a wave C move can be as strong as a wave 3 move. It can be very steep. It doesn't have to be, but it can be very steep. And this is where Fibonacci comes in as well. When you do find a market top, you need to run your Fibonacci tool from the start of the move until the end of the last swing move to see what the potential corrective target will be. Is it going to be 38%, 50%, 61.8%, .8 and anywhere in between? Where is this correction going to go? If wave A only comes down to let's say 23.6 percent which is a very shallow retracement an alarm bell can go off in your head which says okay that's not a steep enough correction for me it's not that steep of a trend I'm gonna watch this how this wave B unfolds and we want the wave B to unfold in a three wave move and then I'm gonna look to sell the wave C for that 38.2 or that 50 percent. So that's how the thinking is. We have alarm bells going off in our head. All right, I want to keep moving with this so that we can get to the live analysis. So these are the trades. Trade number one, buy, buy for the wave three, either on a wave two pullback or upon the break of wave one. Okay, so that's the first trade. And the second trade is going to be to buy for the wave five on the wave four pullback, but make sure you draw your channel lines. And the third trade, which we discussed, is to sell the wave C with a stop above point T or above B. So those are the three trades. Okay, now here's an example of an eight wave cycle where you see one, two, three, four, five within the channel lines and then the market trades up, it doesn't make a new low and then it breaks through this trend line and then continues up its merry way and see how, how far this wave C travels and this is where your Fibonacci tool would come in handy measuring it from the start to the end of the move. And here's another one and just to learn a little bit about some typical ratios, wave two retraces between 50 to 61.8 percent of wave one. That's usually pretty common. It usually 
retraces quite a lot. Wave 4 is usually a smaller retracement between 23.6 and 38.2 percent, sometimes 50 percent of the wave 3. And then wave 3 is a very steep move. So just a note on trading system, trading strategy, and trade plan. The trading system is a collection of trading strategies, and it includes the analysis and the strategies. So we have different strategies for the different cycles. We have an end of, trend, end of trend strategies, and we have trend strategies, so point of clarification. Once we decide what trading strategy we're going to be implementing, we determine our entries and exits based on price action, analysis techniques, and our chart set up with indicators. And many of you have your own strategies, so you can use these tips with your own strategies. And then the trade plan is the set of rules for when a trade opportunity arises. You actually need to write these rules down, write your, your entries and exits down so you follow your plan. Tra plan the trade and trade the plan. I also said that <laughs> about 30 years ago to my traders. Plan the trade and trade the plan. The last point, coaching and accountability, it's really, really important to either have a coach or a mentor, but more importantly is to be accountable. Even if you grab a trading buddy to share your trades with, plan your goals with, and receive feedback from. Accountability is key. Otherwise, we can get into our own heads, and that can be rather destructive. We need to be out there saying exactly what we're trading, what we're doing, and be accountable to someone. It's too easy to hide bad trades under the rug, if you know what I mean. So be accountable. Make that one of your goals for this year. So now let's get to my favorite Elliott Wave setup, and then I'm going to turn it over to Juan in about 10 minutes or less to do an now. Elliott Wave Analysis, which he does every single day, he does it every day on 13 different markets, but he's going to pick out about four markets for you, one from each asset class, and then stick around for our promo at the end. So get ready for the 10 lenses checklist, get a piece of paper, take some notes, because you're going to learn a lot from this. Okay, so hopefully we gave you a bunch of background so far. So Look at this picture. This is a different way at looking at the same picture. Some of you might see through your lens an elderly couple holding each other, and others might see a Mexican guitar player serenading his girl. So this is called a paradigm, different ways of looking at things. And so, too, we have different ways of looking at the market. So call them paradigms if you want. This is my absolute favorite trade. So we're going to develop this and look at a real example and develop this trade together. It's not a... Yeah. And the question is, do we need new lenses to look at the same picture differently? Some of you are looking at this and you just see different things right? Like waves one, two, three, waves A, B, C, or trend correction trend, or the buyers in control on the left, the sellers in control on the right, etc., etc., right? The trend is your friend, one, two, three, reversal pattern, a zigzag, a flag pattern. All right, you get the picture. Now let's try to put all of these things together. So an exercise in finding the end of the trend and setting targets. Okay? We're going to start here at the low of the visible chart. So we're just, we're just going to start here. And what do we see? Usually when we have the end of a move, we see a nice reversal candlestick pattern. Candlesticks, if you don't know about candlesticks, learn about them. This is called a hammer, and it's a significant reversal candle at, at the bottom of the market. So this is the visible low. Now we draw our channel lines, and we just said that 
we want to have a tr see a channel break or a trend line break. And what we're doing is we're prettying up the picture. We're making it nice and clear. And this is our this is our trend line break. So we've started here. We haven't done anything yet. We're just analyzing. Okay? We're following the market. That's what we're doing right now. But we have our first clue about a change in trend. Right? Or we have a clue about a change in trend. Broken channel lines. The next lens is divergence. What do we have? We have divergence. Divergence is when price makes a new low and the oscillator makes a higher low. So this is the awesome oscillator developed by Bill Williams and or popularized by Bill Williams. It's great. I, we use this. We use the awesome oscillator to find the end of the trend. We want to see divergence. Now sometimes you have multiple divergences so you do need some other tools in addition to this. But if you're not using the awesome oscillator, sure, why not, why not try it? Why not look for the end of the trend or include it in your checklist when finding a market top or bottom when seeing when you see that the market is very mature in its trend and needs to turn around. So this is the third lens, broken channel with divergence. Well now this is called the equality trade. So now we're putting a label, a name on this pattern. And this is my favorite trade, the equality trade. That's, that's what we call it in Elliott Wave terminology. And what that means is you measure the first swing move and then the next swing move. The next swing move is the same distance as the first swing move. The market moves up, it comes back. In this case, it's a very steep correction. It's almost a double bottom. And then you're, you, this is one entry for your buy. On the rever after the reversal candlestick pattern, you see a nice green body. This is where you would buy. And what is your measuring objective? It's right here at equality. Okay, That's one way of determining what your target is, and this is called triggering the trade. So first we did the analysis, we saw we had the channel break, we saw a candlestick reversal pattern, we had divergence in the awesome oscillator, and we're through the channel, we have a retracement, and we've been really, really patient during this entire move, and we're getting ready to pull the trigger. We pull the trigger as soon as the market turns around again because we're making the assumption that we're not going to make a new price low. If we do make a new price low, well, then we have to start all over again. We're assuming that we're not. That's the whole premise, right? We've done our analysis. So the next lens is a 1-2-3 reversal pattern. A typical 1-2-3 reversal pattern is where you you label the low price point on the visible chart as a point 1. Then the market moves up. We label that a point 2. And it's not an Elliott Wave label, by the way. And then we have a, a point 3. And once the market moves up and takes out this point 2, that's where you would buy it. Now, that's a 1, 2, 3 pattern. What I like to see in 1, 2, 3 reversals, however, is I like the point 3 to come back to about 50 50% okay and then start to move up 50% of the move from point 1 to point 2 so this is another triggering the trade and the 1 2 3 reversal pattern is apparent on every single time frame it's a really good confirmation tool to use and a really good conservative triggering the trade. Okay. 
lens number six. Now we're going to use our Fibonacci expansion tool. We're still coming up with, fi we're finding targets. So we triggered our trade, we bought here, or we bought over here, but that's, yeah, either way, but we initially bought here. So we use our Fibonacci expansion tool to see what the potential targets are. So we run it on the first swing move to the next move, and then it spits out the expansion. This point here, the first target is 100%. That's the equality trade target. The next is 127.2%. That's a pretty common target on a three-wave move. And then 161.8% is a decent target, a normal target for a 1, 2, 3 or an ABC when the wave 3 or the wave C are a healthy trend move. So you can set three profit targets if you like, one at each level so that you're extending your profits. Or you can be more conservative and get out at the 100% expansion level. So that's lens number six. Lens number seven, all right, this is our trading setup. It's just um, two sets of moving averages, one shorter term, one longer term. You're all familiar with different moving averages that are used, like all types. We use Fibonacci moving averages, but you're probably familiar with the 5, the 20, the 50, 100, 200, etc. So take your shorter term moving shorter term moving average and your longer term moving average, put it together and what you will see is once price is ready to turn around, the averages come together. That's what happens. So in our system, we just target the difference and the distance. So that would be another profit target. Lens number eight is adding a harmonic pattern to this. So this is an AB equals CD pattern. We use all kinds of patterns. This is just AB equals CD. We also use XABCD patterns. But the AB equals CD, this is where the target is at 161.8% times the AB swing. So this is a valid AB equals CD pattern. So now we're combining harmonics with Fibonacci, and now we're going to add the Elliott Wave count. So with the Elliott Wave count, we have our five-wave sequence, and then we have our A, our B, and our C. We, all, we can target our wave C also using uh, Elliott Wave, using Fibonacci, the Fibonacci extensions from... Um, that we learn through Elliott Wave learning. All right, so this is lens number nine. Lens number 10, this is what we call the convergence of Elliott, Fibonacci, and harmonics. We have our Fibonacci extension targets, we have our harmonics target, and we have our Elliott Wave target for the wave C. When you when you put all three together, you get the, we call it the convergence of Elliott, Fibonacci, and harmonics, and it just gives us real confidence for where a move is going to end up. And we can set our profit targets. We can take three positions and set three profit targets. We can move our stop to break even once our profit targets are hit. So this is just a little bit of, of what we do that I wanted to share with you today. I hope you've learned something. There's obviously a lot more to learn, but this is just in summary. What we did was we added 10 different lenses to analyze and dissect the equality pattern using Elliott, Fibonacci, and harmonics. So we started with the blank chart and we looked at the candlestick patterns. We drew our channel lines. We found divergence. 
that was our end of trend. Those were our end of trend checklist triggers. Then we triggered the trade by looking at the equality trade and measuring the swings. And we came up with another entry using the one, two, three reversal pattern. Then we looked at our targets with the Fibonacci expansion tool and the harmonics AV equals CD pattern. And we, of course, we looked at our Elliott wave count. And then we put it all together and we get convergence. So that's my exercise. Now, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Now I'm going to turn it over to Juan, who is going to analyze some live markets with you. And then I'm going to take it back and show you a tremendous promo. So I'm going to turn it over to Juan right now. And while Juan is getting ready, I'm just going to say thank you, you know, thank you so much for, for, for being here. And please pay attention to what Juan has to teach you today and show you with the live markets. Thank you very much, Jody and traders. Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, my name is Juan Maldonado. I'm going to be with you uh, during the next uh, couple of minutes explaining our view on some markets with Elliott Wave. So this is exciting. Let's start from the weekly chart. When you are labeling the waves, it's important to understand the big picture. And actually, I think that for any any analysis technique that you are using, is really important to understand the big picture. Always, you need to start your analysis from the weekly, from the monthly chart and then to start going to lower time frames in order to find your trades. This is the Euro USD spot market weekly chart. We can see on the left that the price declined since May 2014 from the 139.75 to the 104.57 on March the 2015th. At that level, we are seeing the price reacting, reacting to the upside. Um, with classical technical analysis, this is just a continuation pattern. The plan with Elliott Wave is to understand these chaotic and complex moves inside in order to find the direction. Direction is key. What we are seeing here is that the price at the first market cycle completed a three-wave sequence that we are labeling W, X, and Y. So three waves. And then the price started to go down and retest the support area of the 104.57 and precisely there it reacted and reversed. It reversed to the upper side of this a consolidation channel for this wave X and now it's doing something similar. It went down to the support area again, it tested and is building a market reversal. But the question is the, that we need to solve with the yellow wave analysis is the bottom of the market at the end of the move on the euro or we can expect uh, something different. So according to the wave count that we are doing inside, and I'm going to, ch to show it in a second, we're thinking that this leg up is likely to be a corrective wave, which means that soon we can expect another leg down, like a double bottom, but we will need a validation that we'll, I will explain in a second. If we have that new leg down, the price could easily reach, of course, first of all, the 104.50 area, that is the previous low, and if it breakouts, we can expect the euro coming down to the 101.15. Once we have this sequence completed, a pullback will be necessary, and at that moment, our target is around the 113, 114 area. 
So this is for the longer term, this is our forecast. As an alternative scenario, if the price uh, completes the move to the 10880 area, we will call the end of the move down. We will say, okay, this market cycle is over, this is an alternative scenario, and we will expect a pullback, a retest of the uh, support, and then a continuation up to the 114th. What we're going to do in our time frames is to find which of the two scenarios is are going to be more likely to happen. Because um, we know that at the end, we're going to see the euro uh, returning to the middle of this box uh, around the 113, 114 area. But for now that we are at the bottom of the market, we have to be extremely, extremely careful. So now that we understand that wave count, we can go to the 12 hour time frame, like the four hour chart. So this is our four hour, this is the low that we were talking about on the um, 103.50 area, and the price has started to move to the upside. So the whole structure seems to be a corrective wave. A corrective wave. That will be here the first corrective, a connector wave that we call X, a second corrective, a connector wave, and here comes the third corrective. Our target is around the 108, 10850 area for this B wave. It's a really uh, deep retrace for the B wave. But once the B wave is over, what we are going to see is a five wave sequence uh, down. Uh, the expected will be one, two, three, four, five, and then ABC. That's a great market reversal when we are finding the end of a complex corrective or any corrective wave, when you start seeing five waves, in this case down, opposite to the corrective, and then three, wave, three waves up. That's going to be the plan. But when we check the lower time frames, like the hourly chart, here we're seeing a deep wave four. So here is the wave four, wave four magenta, and in terms of FIBO, of the FIBO retrace, it came to the golden ratio. 61.8% was the support for the session today. Precisely there, the market react with a green candle, pretty powerful candle, after after the news, after the Fed news, and it engulfs one, two, three, four, five, and six six candles. It's an engulfing pattern, a reversal, but precisely there at the 61.8. This is a deep way for. That means that right now our target is at the top on the hourly chart, 108.12 area. We're expecting now a pullback as a wave one, a wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five. Just a double top formation to complete our wave A. Something else that is really important on the Euro, it's a level that we are watching closely. And that level, let me hide, let me show here my waves and hide them again. The, the level that we are looking for to validate an alternative wave count is the 108.74. That level, this high uh, that happened on December the 8th, if the price goes above that level, we are going to call the end of that B wave right here. And then we will expect a three wave sequence down and a continuation up. So this is our bullish S scenario. But the beauty of Elliott Wave is that we, we know precisely when we need to activate the bullish wave count. And we'll be right there if the price goes to that level. If not, we just continue watching the price. We can trade inside, as the example I just did on the hourly chart. Or if we, if we see the five wave sequence to the downside, 
uh, we will confirm that this is a corrective wave, and we, we think it's a corrective wave, and it's missing another leg down. After that, the move up. So that's our plan on the Euro USD. What about gold? Gold has been climbing during this week. We can see that from the four hour chart where gold started to move up at the 1180. But the question is why at that area? Why, why the price just retrace after or reverse better after the 1180? And with Elliott Wave, we can understand those levels because the wave 4 is likely to retrace 38.2% of the previous wave 3. If we are wondering where the wave 4 is likely to be over, so the answer is 38.2% of the wave 3. Let's add the level. So as you can see, the price reacted precisely at the 38.2%. After trying to continue with a red candle close, closing below the 38.2%, the next candle was a powerful green candle that uh, reversed and reacted at the 38.2%. So just with that reversal candle, we can start thinking on the bullish setup. So it's a great example of how we can use Fibonacci and Elliott Wave to understand levels. Once we have the market reversal, and it's important to validate the entries, um, and you can validate also on the 15 minute chart and on the five minute chart if you like to trade on lower time frames and if you're a day trader. So the target at that moment that we activate was the previous high. This area of the 1220 on the four hour chart, at least we're expecting the level. But the market is fractal and we have waves inside the waves and more waves inside the waves. Today, the, the session, during the New York session, we start seeing the price coming down, coming down for a wave four. This wave four retraced 78.6% of the wave three. It's a deep wave four plus the wave four got inside the wave one. This is a leading diagonal wave, but don't worry about that for now because it's some, if you are not familiar with the daily wave rules, it's just a, a variation of the impulse. So the price precisely there rejected those levels. It rejected on the hourly chart the 61.8, the 78.6, and it started to move up. So that's the validation that that was the end of the wave four. And on the hourly chart, we could activate the previous high. That's the 12th, 15th. But don't forget that on the four hour chart, we have a target at the 12th, 20. And that is a great example of following the market by using a little wave. Because it's not just the labels, it's also the Fibonacci levels that as you can see worked fantastic on all these examples. And let's check another market like the S&P. The S&P has been very complex this year, especially when it started to, to be sideways uh, at the beginning of the year, at the end of the, of the previous year. It was a really complex market cycle, uh, seeing the S&P just bouncing up and down in that huge trading range. But finally, the price started to move higher. And our wave count is quite simple. We have on, the, on, on this side of the chart, the left chart, the left side of the chart, we have the wave four as a three wave sequence. When you have a three wave sequence, it's a corrective wave. And that means that we are going to start looking for a continuation. The continuation started as a wave one, wave two, and here comes an extension for, for this move. One, two. We are in the middle of the wave three. 
So we are in the middle of the wave three, the wave three blue. So we are there. Um, that's why we are seeing the price so bullish during these days, because we are in sight of the wave three. The longer term target that we have set is around the, the 2,500 area. On lower time frames, like the hourly chart, we can start planning the next trade based on what we did on higher time frames. The price completed with that strong move up last week that we were seeing on, on the S&P, also on the Dow, on the Nasdaq, this one, two, three, four, five move for the wave one, and then the price started to do a double zigzag, double corrective for wave two. The wave two was really deep because it went to the 78.6, but that is fantastic how we can find those levels, as you can see. Precisely there, the market started to react to the upside in order to create the foundation for the next move. That is going to be the wave three red. And the target for that wave three red is at least the 100% 23.14th area, but we are expecting more than that, like 23, uh, 23.27, 23.30 area. Now, on the 15 minute chart, let's see how we can plan this setup. Here we are. Clearly, the price did a five wave sequence to the upside. That's key. One, two, three, a consolidation and extended wave five. And now we are here A, B, and C. This is what, what we call in the harmonics course a, a godly pattern because it went to the 61.8 area, then to the 78.6. So our target for the C wave this week is the 22.71. So what's the plan with the S&P? If you start seeing the price going down, it means that we are getting closer to a fantastic bullish setup. You need to take a look at the 22.71 area in order to find a reversal. A candlestick reversal could be enough um, the, the breakout of the trend line, for example, or any validation that you use. And that breakout um, or reversal of, of this bearish move will be the beginning of the wave three because that will be the way to start following the wave three, like a breakout of the trend line, pull back, and here comes the continuation. That's the bullish scenario, and that's why it's so important to wait and see the price, how it reacts at that level. Because another scenario is that the price don't care about that level and just continues. But in that case, you didn't trigger a trade. Only if you see the reversal at that area and you are able to confirm. Or if you feel more comfortable waiting for the price to confirm the bullish trend at the previous high, 2289, that's another way to, to do it. To wait, if you're really conservative, will be better to wait for the breakout of that level and then just follow the trend. That is quite easy. And the last market I want to check today is oil. Oil has been complex during this week. We are in a market cycle that has been sideways. Our forecast based on the Elliott wave is as, as follows. This is just a, a box formation where the price try to break out with this green candle, but the, the breakout failed because a breakout that works will, will look differently, like a pullback that respects the old uh, upper side of the box and then the continuation. But if the price goes inside the box again, it means that we continue in a corrective wave. That is why we are looking for another leg down to the bottom of the box around the 51 area. And then the breakout of, of the consolidation, the pullback, and the continuation up 
for this wave 3 blue. And then the wave A, uh, and then the retrace for the B green, and then our final destination is the sixth area. But what we are doing here is analyzing every pip, every, every point, in order to make sure that we can find the end of the consolidation at the best price possible in order to follow the move up. So that is my Elliott Wave analysis for today. Thank you very much for being here. And now Jody will continue with the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. And we're going to do Q&A just momentarily. So I'm just going to show our promotion for you. And then we're going to take some Q&A. So I hope you enjoyed Juan's analysis. And by watching and listening to his videos every single day that, Juan, that he produces as part of our service, you will get analysis on 13 different markets every single day. So we have a very special offer for you, which is a back to basic seminar with one month of our premier market analysis. And the back to basic seminar includes four different modules. So four different trading workshops. One on becoming a trader, so more of what you need to do, how do you get organized, etc. And then the second module is on market structure. So looking at all kinds of ways to look at market structure, support and resistance, pivot points, Fibonacci, that will really, really help you in determining how far the market will travel during a trading session, ATR, etc. Module three is on fundamentals and a candlestick primer. And this is all really important information for you and you might learn some you know a few new things even if you are familiar with all these concepts and the fourth module is on Elliott Wave so that's what you get in the seminar and you get one month of our premier market analysis service which is seventy five dollars a month normally for seventeen dollars so it's really really worth the investment fxtradersedge.com forward slash market fest that's the shortened link that you can go to I should put it in the maybe one you can put it in the uh, the box fxtradersedge.com forward slash market fest you'll get four modules in the back to basics seminar and one month of our Elliott Wave desk so you can use it as your roadmap to find trades for the next month. Now, what do you get? What 13 markets do we analyze every single day? Well, one produces a daily video and produces the daily four hour and hourly charts on 13 markets, including the Euro, the Pound, the Aussie, the Dollar Yen, the New Zealand Dollar, the Dollar Canada, the S&P, Gold, Oil, the Dow, NASDAQ, the Russell, and the DAX. So this is a phenomenal service, $17 for a complete course and one month of daily analysis. fxtradersedge.com forward slash market fest. So that is the shortened link. Please write it down. And now it's Q&A time. So are there any questions? Are there any questions? <laughs> any comments or questions? How many of you are already using Elliott Wave analysis in your trading? Not how many of you, but are if you're you are you using Elite Wave analysis in your trading? Let's see how many responses we get. <clears throat> okay, I see that it's okay. Yes, no, and some of you aren't responding. 
Okay, you're using Fibonacci and harmonics. Good. You're using Elliott and Fibonacci, and you have too many questions. Oh, you just started because you signed up with us two weeks ago. Excellent. All right, there is a question here. When can wave four go down below wave one? So that's a very good question. And it goes down below wave one. Here, let me let me move it to the next page and I'll I'll draw it out for you right here. When we have it's called a diagonal structure. Okay, and we can we can have a leading diagonal or an ending diagonal. In classical technical analysis, it's called a wedge. And this is what it looks like. So literally, you can draw it looks like a wedge. Okay? And once price reaches the end of the wave five, the measuring objective in classical technical analysis will take us all the way down to, and I drew this as a squiggly line, to the start of the five wave sequence. That's the measuring objective of a wedge. So this is called a leading diagonal or an ending diagonal, which means it's a leading diagonal when it occurs in wave one or wave A and it's an ending diagonal when it occurs in wave 5 or wave C. But the characteristics are the same. It's a choppy trending market where wave 4 does go below the top of wave 1. So we do and that's called overlap and that's called a choppy wedge formation, diagonal formation, and when we, we, this is when we see triple divergence, when we make a new high and then another new high, we have triple divergence. And when we see that happening and then when we break this supporting trend line and the market starts to trade down, this is a really, really good trade opportunity, another great trading opportunity. Great question. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? So that's called a, a diagonal, and we we described the five wave sequence, the impulse where wave four doesn't move beyond the top of the wave one. So this is your five wave impulse, and this is your leading or ending diagonal at the start of the move or at the end of the move. What other questions do you have? So I just want to go back to this slide now so that you can see our special while I answer these questions. Okay, good question. Would you call a double top or bottom a 5B? Or, I, I don't know the first part of it, oh, X2 or 5NB, X and 2 or 5NB. All right, so, and, and Juan, I don't know if you, if you want to do this, if you want to look up NVIDIA stock in the last couple minutes, Steve, Stefan is asking, that. So I'll just answer these two questions. I'll answer that question and how do I recognize the start of wave three? So let's go back to our little drawing board here and let's just, let's see. So the first question, would you call a double top or a double? Okay. So a double top, let's just draw a five wave sequence out and then we have the A, the B, and the C. So this is a double top. So yes, this would be a wave five, and this would be a wave B. That would be a double top. And now the next is an X. So for an X, we have a W, X, Y, X, Z for a triple combination. 
okay? So W, X, mm, okay, I see where you're going with this. All right, I wouldn't call that a, you're, you're, this is what you're asking. You're saying, could this be a double bottom right here? So we have a W, X, and then we start the pattern moving up for the for the for the Y like that something like that yeah you could call this a double bottom why not it's certainly going to appear as a double bottom on the time frame that you're trading if you're noticing this absolutely and now the next question is how do you tell the beginning of the wave three which is right here and th this is where we again this is low on the visible chart just all the analysis all the work that we did today is recognizing the wave three so if you took some notes we had the a b c or the one two three so all the work that we did today looking at divergence looking at the candlestick pattern here looking at the the um, trend line break, the channel line break, and then measuring the first swing move and looking at the retracement. And then as long as we don't make a price low, you can get in on the next swing move higher, which should be a wave three. I don't really know if we have time to do NVIDIA at this point because we're ending it in two minutes promptly. So send an email and we will, okay, S -s stock, ah, good point. There are many stock traders in here, so it might be helpful to, for them to know that Juan gives a stock analysis every Monday and they can ask about their individual stocks they are interested in. This, of course, might not be included with the special, but is available with the general service. Ah, okay. Thanks, Vicki. All right, please send any questions that we haven't answered, including your NVIDIA stock analysis, to send it to me, Jody at fxtradersedge.com, and I'll make sure that Quan gets it, and he does an analysis on it. So Jody at fxtradersedge.com. Any questions that weren't answered, feel free to email me and I'm happy to answer your questions after the session.